What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. It is a beautiful Sunday morning here in California in the U.S., and we're going to be talking about some semi-legal related stuff when it comes to Prince Andrew. Earlier this week, he was stripped of his titles by the Queen and um, denied his royal patronage, whatever that means. Um, and I don't usually talk about stuff like this because this is more like royal news and gossip, and I don't really I don't care about that at all, and I don't cover it, but I am covering the Virginia Roberts versus Prince Andrew case, and some of the royal happenings and shenanigans might actually become legally relevant soon, and, and it could be relevant right now because if Prince Andrew is losing his uh, financial backing from the Queen, which he did have, the Queen basically, according to the royal experts that I've heard, Last year, when Regina Roberts sued him first, um, the Queen was not happy about it, but she was basically backing Prince Andrew. Okay, I talked about this in another video. There's been articles written on it, and most of the royal experts agreed back then. She just lost her husband, so she's probably less likely to be cruel towards Andrew. So I, I would say, in my opinion, from what I, and my opinion doesn't mean much because I'm not a royal expert, but according to what I've heard and read, it seems like she's siding and bowing down to the pressure she's getting from people in you know, in upper echelons of uh, British power who are telling her this guy's bad news. And uh, the place that I go to to watch stuff regarding this case when it comes to the royal experts is uh, News Nation, which is a small channel on YouTube. Well, it's not really small. They're decent. Um, Ashley Banfield works for this uh works for this network and they have a lot of royal experts on to talk about british stuff so this is the channel i go to they have a rational usually you know sensible take on things so i i don't i i'm not somebody who knows i grew up in britain and knows the culture so it's very hard to understand what the baseline should be and what the baseline truth about the royals is because like you have to be saturated and grow up in a culture to really understand all the all the players in it like american culture i know going back at least 30, 40 years, I understand American culture very well. From the Reagans onward to the Bushes and the Obamas and the Clintons, I understand the political actors in America and because I pay attention to it and I'm saturated in it. In Britain, I have no idea who the power structures are. I basically know the Tories and the Lab uh, Labour Party and um, Jamie Corbyn is a person I know and Boris Johnson. Other than that, I don't understand all the players, so it's hard for me to have an educated, rational opinion on things when it comes to Britain, which is why I don't talk about it. I get a lot of requests in the comments section and by some of my patrons who want me to talk about British politics and British uh, British legal issues and, and British characters in the royal family, I can't talk about it because I don't know enough and I don't talk about things that I don't know about. I talk about American law because that's what I know. I talk about Ameri I used to talk about American politics because I was in American politics. So I don't like to talk about things that I don't have an expertise in. And when I don't know something, I explicitly say I don't know much about it. And that's why I'm saying this right now. Okay. But nevertheless, there are some royal experts that make sense. Their predictions come true. And that's how you know in science that you're right when your predictions come true. That's how you know you know something. Although there's always some uncertainty because you, nobody knows what the royals are really going to do. And everybody's just operating from what they heard from who they think are credible sources. But this channel is not that bad. That's all I'm saying. OK, so I want you guys to listen to this. This was made on January 4th, 2022. So this, you know, a week or so before he was actually stripped and the royal expert here we talked about it. So I want you guys, you guys to listen to this. And maybe if you want to know some stuff about some rational information about what's going on with the with the royal family, this might be a channel you want to check out for the people who are telling me to uh, make videos about it. This is my recommendation and a place for you guys to go. But let's listen to this real fast. Then we'll talk more about it. The effects on Prince Andrew will reach far beyond the U.S. courtroom, uh, of course, across the pond. Royal commentator Hillary Fordwich joining us now to talk about the impact this case is having in many British quarters. Hillary, good morning to you. Pleasure to be with you, Adrian. Well, it's, he's not facing any criminal charges. This is only civil. But in, is there any difference that that makes, especially in terms of how the public views him? I don't think so. The damage has already been done in the court of public opinion. I think one of the issues, of course, is with regard to the military titles. Um, they have been in abeyance. He actually holds nine honorary military titles, and all of those have been in abeyance since this is all broken. The top military brass actually has said that this is a toxic environment for him to be in. This is untenable, all of his conduct. And actually, it comes down to the Queen to strip him of those titles, but very much the top brass hopes. And I think 
I can not, nobody can speak for the nation, but really everybody is hoping he's going to do the decent thing and step back and willingly step back from them. However, there are those that are divided because of course one is innocent until actually proven guilty, but it's very much viewed that if this does go through court, and of course we know that tomorrow the judge is going to rule, or uh, today's Tuesday, today the judge is going to rule if this will actually go to trial, it is damaging either way to the entire royal family in the court of public opinion. Could he be stripped of his title, the Duke of York? Well, he could be. The last time, there's actually something called the Deprivation Act, the Deprivation of Titles Act, and that um, was in effect many years ago. In 1917 was the last time that it was used because four German nationals, of course, were removed of their peerages in the House of Lords um, the House due, of to, Lords. due to the um, First World yeah. War. It could happen. However, that decision, unlike the military titles, that decision does not reside with the Queen. Um, it actually is a constitutionally has to go through and be voted by statute by the House of Commons and the House of Lords, and then it will be by the Queen's approval. Rather like we have here in the US, we don't just have one branch of government that makes all the decisions. Same thing in the UK. Um, but that could, of course, happen um, if that was by public demand. I will say one thing definitely, about the Queen. She is very savvy and very sensible about protecting, as we know, the crown, and she will do the right thing. She and the right thing was for her to uh, strip it. Now, she said that they can't do it just unilaterally. So did it go through Parliament? I don't know. This is why I don't comment on stuff, because I don't know the details. But she just said that the Queen can't unilaterally do that to strip him. But it seems like she did, right? Or did it go through Parliament? I don't know. Anyways, um, the Queen did strip him. Everybody's heard it now. Um, and uh, unfortunately, they didn't make a video. They haven't made a video after the decision. So this was on January 4th. And they were saying that it is possible. This royal expert I've listened to before, she seems to know what she's talking about and some royal history, which is important understanding that for example when i talk about the law you, in order to understand american law you have to understand american history the constitution and the and specifically the t first 10 uh, 10 amendments the bill of rights is very important to differentiate american law from british law because america was a british colony and the history of that matters some of that common law made by judges that still that still appears british common law is still apparent in american law it's exactly there in state law for example a lot of local uh, jurisdictions still have british law so people don't know that because most people don't know history. That's why her citing history gives me more confidence in that that she knows what she's talking about. But anyways, so this video they made on January 13th after the judge decided that the case can go forward, but it was before the uh, the queen stripped uh, Prince Andrew of his titles. Okay, so let's listen to this one a little bit as well. Joining me right now, royal historian Hadley Hall Mears. Hadley, thank you so much uh, for being with us this morning. Has a has a royal ever been involved in this level of legal trouble before? No, a royal hasn't ever been involved in in recent history in this level of. Um, problems before. Uh, Queen Princess Anne in 2002 was uh, proven guilty for her dog biting two stu students in a park. But that's a very minor thing uh, compared to the allegations against Prince Andrew. I, I would say so. What are the implications uh, for the prince and for the palace with this judge's ruling? Well, I think the palace really has to decide now what they're going to do. And really, this is the end of Prince Andrew's public life. He already stepped back from all royal duties in 2019. And now there's talk about whether there should be an act of parliament to strip him of his title, the Duke of York, and whether the queen should strip him of his military honors. You know, it's interesting because uh, oh, for a lot of okay. people, it's that one photo where he is seen uh, with uh the people involved in this case and i think that for you know obviously she just forgot virginia roberts name it's hard to be a uh, hard to be a news person it seems like they're not operating out of teleprompters which i appreciate because i don't have teleprompters either i barely have notes um i remember what i want to say for the most part and i I'm, I'm usually guided by the legal papers when i make videos but credit to her for not using a teleprompter this is why i like these you know, combination between old media and new media where they have like a they have an official set here, like a news station, but they don't use teleprompters. So I appreciate that. Um, but anyways, yeah. So so um, this person was also saying that the, the queen might decide to actually do it. So I think I have more clarity on what's happening here. So uh, because she's the sovereign, she has the right 
to uh, to give and take away military designations, where if you want to get rid of his royal title as the as the Duke of York, that has to go through the parliament. But if you want to get rid of his military titles and strip him of those, then the queen can do it. That's why the queen was able to do it, because I didn't hear anything and I didn't read anything in the articles about any act of parliament to get rid of his uh, military titles. So... I think that's what makes sense the most. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section. Once again, not an expert in British in the British peerage uh, and uh, anything having to do with the uh, the British system. So the the operative question here for us when it comes to the legalese is: Is Prince Andrew still being backed by the Queen in some way when it comes to finances? Because as of 2021, she was willing to support him. Okay, so. It's according to the research that I've done from the sources that I've seen from England, they say that he's not getting any direct money from the queen. OK, or the from the public, he is getting money. He's getting a stipend, I believe, from the queen that might actually come from the public. But then they claim that whatever money the queen might be giving to her son is from private sources. It's not from the public coffers. Isn't does the queen work? Because as far as I know, she doesn't actually work a job. She's very old now and she spends most of her time in the palace and she goes to some events sometimes to wave a uh, wave to the crowd. That's all. That's all they do, as far as I can tell. And. Uh, so it's not very clear here. Now, there was another question about whether the um, the Metropolitan Police was going to be offering him uh, protection that costs money. Uh, this was also an issue when uh, when the when Harry and Meghan left public life. Uh, it turned out that they were actually being protected, at least in some events, by the police, uh, as as um, Harry himself revealed when they were talking about talking to Oprah Winfrey. Uh, he said that he was getting security that was funded by the public. So it seems like some aspects of his life will be uh, bankrolled by the public. But she, he's not directly, technically, he's not getting direct money from the public coffers. That's what they say. OK, no, again, not an expert. I've just been reading up on what the what the so-called experts say about what's going on. So that's what I'm bringing to you guys. Um, uh, I have a lot of British viewers, so they're, they're probably interested in this stuff more than I am. The only only interest I have is is this is this restriction on his funds? If there is a restriction, is it going to lead to a settlement? Because. His lawyers cost a lot of money, especially Melissa Lerner. Melissa Lerner is one of his uh, uh, one of his lawyers, and also Andrew Brettler is probably charging him a pretty penny as well, probably like eight hundred dollars an hour for all his billable hours. If this does go to trial, then it will probably last a while, and that's a lot of billable hours for the attorneys, and that's going to cost him probably millions of pounds. So the money factor is the only relevant legal thing here, where if the Queen is cutting him off from whatever money he's getting and it's it was estimated that he makes like three million dollars a year or something that's one of the estimates i saw it's because he used to at least make that much money because he used to be a representative of the uk and he would go to all these charity functions and these prominent fundraisers and places and he would get a stipend for that and that money i believe did come from at least indirectly the public coffers so he was getting paid because he was a royal okay that's how he was making money plus he goes to all these other events uh charities and fundraising and stuff that gives him fees so this is how the royals make money by cashing in on their titles on their position it's all about position the lofty positions that they uh, occupy uh, provides them with a way to get uh, get speaking engagements, other things like Hillary Clinton gets got like six hundred thousand dollars just to speak to um, to Wall Street and one of the Wall Street banks, Goldman Sachs. It's not because she's a brilliant economist. It's because her title and position allows her to cash in. That's what, that's what people do after they serve in public office. I'm, I'm not happy about that because I believe in public service for the sake of public service, not so you can cash in later. But that's a, that's unfortunately what people do. Republicans, Democrats, whatever. All prominent people do this. George W. Bush also did it and Obama's doing it. So everybody's doing it. Um, but nevertheless, that's how things work. Unfortunately, I'm not happy about a lot of things, how a lot of things worked in uh, in politics in America and also in Britain. But that's how uh, the royals and other people with prominent titles make money. It's not like Prince Andrew's out there working in a Taco Bell or uh, or some doing some, you know, real hard work, being a garbage man, producing actual goods for society, um, doing some something with your hands to build something or to help uh, keep society society clean. Garbage men are, should be respected. They should not be derided. And working class people in general should be respected, although the royals don't think that. They look
look down on working class people, but they live off the uh, dollar of the working class people in Britain. They have always done that. And that's why I'm fundamentally opposed to the royals, uh, aside from all the divine right of kings nonsense where they think they're above the regular person. That's why I love the idea of America where everybody's supposed uh, to be equal and nobody is, you know, given the right by God to rule, which is what the divine right of kings is. Remember that. They literally think they're they're genetically superior to you because they're part of the royal bloodline. That's that's the concept but behind the, the royal families in Europe, not just England, but also in France. They killed their royals, good for them. And uh, many other countries, Belgium, Germany, they all had their royals. All those systems have changed now. Most of those be, uh, the places don't have royals anymore. Britain still does, although the royals don't rule like they used to. That's why they have the prime minister and the parliament. So I don't know if this is true or not, but according to some experts, he doesn't actually have money in the bank to show like millionaires and billionaires mostly his money is tied up in properties in real estate and also uh, he gets stipends uh, for the royal services that he provides that's how he's made his money that's how he pays for his lodges royal lodges and, and houses that he owns um, if i'm not mistaken all the princes probably have their own um, palaces because i know that princess diana had the kensington kensington palace if i'm not mistaken that's where she lived um so Prince Andrew probably does have his own uh, palace, or maybe he lives with his mom. I don't know. He does spend some time. He was hiding out um, uh, with uh, Elizabeth when the initial uh, legal papers were filed by Virginia Roberts and the summonses went to England. He was hiding with his mom to avoid being served papers. So who knows where he lives? I Like I said, I don't keep up with this stuff. I'm just telling you guys what the experts are saying here. And uh, there was a lot of pressure, like the video said, there was a lot of a lot of pressure from the top higher up people in the uh, military establishment um, to strip him of his titles because all of this business with Virginia Roberts is really bad for him. So so that's what's happening right now. It's not very clear how he's going to fund his legal defense. Um, we just covered how his lawyers are asking for um, the courts in Australia to depose uh, Virginia Roberts' husband, Robert Giffray, and uh, uh, and her psychologist, which pr it's probably not going to happen. The court is not going to allow for a doctor to break privilege without Virginia Roberts' permission. So the psychologist is probably not going to be able to be deposed uh, or asked any kind of, you know, uh, personal questions regarding her sessions because that's protected by the testimonial privileges uh, according to American law. And so that's where we stand right now. It, from everything I've read and everything I've watched on this, nobody is clearly able to give an answer about whether the queen is still funding him directly. The queen says that whatever money she might be giving to him is from her private fund. It's not coming from the public because people in Britain are not happy about, happy about what Prince Andrew has been accused of. Uh, he has not been proven guilty, like the video said, that's true. But nevertheless, just the existence of that picture with him, with his hands around Virginia Roberts and uh, Gillian Maxwell, who's uh, convicted now, uh, in the background is not good for him. That has not been good for him for a while. But like I always say, pictures like that don't necessarily mean any guilt. Even having a picture with Jeffrey Epstein doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Lots of people took pictures with uh, the society people. So I believe in individual pieces of lines of evidence proving somebody's guilt. So just because somebody took a picture with somebody else who's been found guilty doesn't doesn't mean they were doing a crime. It doesn't look good, but legally speaking, that means absolutely nothing. Unless you have pictures of that person committing a crime or you have video, it's not evidence. Okay, so I don't like this whole guilt by association nonsense that the conspiracy theorists do, which is, oh, you took a picture with Jeffrey Epstein one time, so you must be molesting kids too. That's not how it works. So the question of whether he's going to reach a settlement with Virginia Roberts is going to depend on how much money he has to spend, because if he can't pay his lawyers, then he can't have a legal, legal defense, and that means he's going to be trying to get a settlement with them. So we will either hear about settlement talks or we, we won't. If we don't hear about them, that means that he's pursuing this case and he aims to take it all the way. Uh, or if we hear about settlement talks, that means he's running out of money and he wants to get this lawsuit over with. Right. So he's going to try to pay Virginia Roberts off, which did work with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. And there could be many reasons why people settle. Like I said, most regular people settle because they can't pay their own fees. So who knows why Virginia Roberts side settled back in the day? She only got five hundred thousand dollars back then. I thought she got millions, but she didn't. The number one conclusion people jump to is that, oh, she was only after the money.
Well, what else What else are you going to do with a civil law? So do you understand civil law? Do you understand what it's all about? It's different from criminal law. Civil law is all about getting money, monetary compensation for emotional damages or battery or whatever, right? Virginia Roberts is suing for intentional infliction of emotional harm and also battery. Okay, those are the two charges that she's uh, she's uh, uh, has against uh, Prince Andrew. That's why she's suing him. Uh, but civil lawsuits are all about money. So in the end, if she wins, she gets money. And if she settles, she gets money. So no matter what, you're trying to get money for your damages. That's what civil suits are about. And also send a message to other people who might be abusers to not do it in the future, to know that we're going to come after you if you uh, hurt people. So there's a monetary reason to not uh, do these things. And uh, just, you know, the destruction of reputation is all also another thing that should be a deterrence to other people who are going to abuse uh, girls in the future. So always remember that there's a lot of moving parts to these stories and you have to look at each individual thing and judge them based on the evidence and not jump to any hasty conclusions. That's what I would ask for everybody watching the video. And uh, that's about all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell and press all for future videos. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Your support is much appreciated. And one of the reasons I did this video is because one of my patrons asked me to do it. So I do respond directly to my patrons, especially the $5 plus patrons who asked me to cover topics because I appreciate your support and I want to give back to people who support this show. All right. So with that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, Peace.